All right, so uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, good afternoon for those in Japan and Asia, and good evening for those in the US and for those in the EU. Uh, God bless you for being here at four or five in the morning. Uh, so uh, my name is Alan. Um, I'm a 36 year old Asian male. Uh, I have short black hair, dark glasses, um, wearing a dark gray hoodie today with a light gray t shirt. I'm streaming from my home office that I share with my dog. Um, I apologize in advance if he barks. Uh, he just knows there's other people that I'm talking to, and he gets kind of a little excited over that. Um, I'm a uh, senior software engineer on the Code A team here at IBM. Uh, I've been working here for about eight years. Um, four of those years, I've been working with open source projects, um, a few Apache projects, uh, Big Top and Bari, uh, Spark, and now um, a little bit touching on uh, Airflow. Um, I contribute uh, to the Jupyter Enterprise Gateway Project and, of course, um, Alira. And uh, this is my personal contact information, so please feel free to contact me with uh, any questions after the after the show. So a brief overview uh, of what I want to go over today. Um, so first of all, obviously, Alira, what is it? Um, going to go about a little background on how a liar works with uh, creating how we create a notebook based pipeline, the, uh, the concept behind it. Um, the, we're going to go over the main centerpiece of the Alira project, which is the R visual pipeline editor, um, how we leverage Airflow with our pipeline processor and how we use Apache Airflow with, and uh, go over a short demo. And then we're going to go over real quickly about some of our uh, new changes upcoming in version three of of Alira, including support for uh, operators and components. So first thing is uh, Alira. So what is it? So at its core, it's a, a curated collection of UI and server extensions. So um, we've created a couple of these extensions ourselves. Some we heavily contribute to, and some we've picked up along the way from the community, um, and they're this was created and curated to complement each other, and all these extensions are open source. Uh, so here are a couple of the features and extensions that we that we have as part of Alira. So uh, the language server here, um, excuse me, the language server protocol integration for folks who want more of an IDE feel when using Jupyter Lab, uh, syntax highlighting, autocomplete, etc. Uh, we have a notebook and Python script uh, table of contents extension installed as well, so you can more easily navigate through a long notebook or script. Uh, Built-in Git version control. Uh, code snippets to make reusing code samples and slices easier from notebook to notebook or script to script. Um, hybrid runtime support with the Jupyter Enterprise Gateway so folks can launch remote kernels. And, of course, our uh, centerpiece, the Visual Pipeline Editor. So uh, with the visual pipeline editor, um, a little small background. And so in short, we wanted a tool that could uh, let users create data pipelines without having to learn the domain language behind it. Um, wanted to give them more time to focus on the work within the pipeline itself, as opposed to learning the DSL and the libraries used to construct these pipelines. Um, Alaris actually started out as a very small extension, um, literally just a single button up here in the toolbar um, to submit a notebook to a remote uh, execution environment. But uh, we decided we want a little more, and it's kind of um, spawned off this entire suite of extensions that we that we have today. So um, let's. Uh, Go ahead and go go over some of the concepts um, or the concept of why we have uh, notebook-based pipelines and ultimately what led us to Apache Airflow um, to use Apache Airflow as our as a supported uh, workflow orchestrator for for our pipelines. So we support creating pipelines uh, with Python scripts, R, and Jupyter notebooks, and question would be why notebooks? Um, obviously, we are built on the Jupyter Lab platform, which is one of the main reasons. Um, it's the popularity of the platform amongst data scientists and data engineers. 
it's uh, easy to understand and it's more intuitive um, than pure Python scripts due to how the notebook cell encompasses units of work um, iteratively to make them um, more descriptive and you can easily tell a story to whoever is using it or reading it or reusing it. Um, but uh, like stories, these notebooks and scripts can sometimes grow to be quite long and when they do, we wanna break them down into smaller units. Um, and smaller notebooks. So in this example, for sake of simplicity, uh, we're just going to can we're just going to be create be creating just a pure notebook based data pipeline. So breaking down each of these steps here, so a basic script would just probably do something or excuse me, basic pipeline. Um, just very simple, probably oversimplified, but uh, you would just read in some data do something with data and output and store. Uh, breaking down into these, each into a separate notebook makes things easier to understand and maintain. Um, we're also then able to uh, read in, um, uh, run these uh, notebooks or nodes in the pipeline uh, in parallel um, if the pipeline runtime supports it, in which case Airflow does. So uh, you'll be able to parallelize your workflow as well by modularizing. So after modularizing these notebooks, um, some of the notebooks may have different requirements than others, like libraries, uh, learning frameworks, as well as any miscellaneous environmental configurations, or a notebook or a script or just a general step in your pipeline could require more horsepower for heavier workloads, which comes in the form of hardware requirements. Um, what we want to do is we want to ultimately use containers for this because it provides an excellent solution uh, by uh, encompassing or uh, providing these uh, all these extra um, uh, requirements in a nice neat little package uh, using um, using these containers um, that you can pull from uh, places like docker hub key or in, if you're in a more secure environment, you can pull from a container registry or private container registry, or you can build the image yourself and push to even a local registry. And you can, you can um, reuse these containers to uh, meet whatever requirements you need to run these notebooks from within uh, the workflow orchestrator. So, excuse me. So next, um, I know I talked about the Python or the, the libraries, the learning frameworks, and the uh, environmental configurations. I haven't gone over um, the hardware requirements. So hardware requirements when using containers um, come in the form of uh, things like uh, CPU and memory, um, architecture, GPUs and TPUs. Um, Containers will help um, with the, I guess, the libraries and the frameworks like uh, CUDA drivers or the CDN and the neural net uh, libraries as well, um, having them baked into the image themselves. But um, the hardware requirements are still hardware requirements, uh, which some nodes need more of, some need less of. Um, so we want to use a container orchestrator so we can configure these. Um, and where we do that, we add workers, right? Um, different workers with different architectures, um, different um, hardware configurations with uh, some workers might have uh, solid state um, uh, storage uh, classes, uh, or excuse me, solid state storage that you can use storage classes to, requ um, uh, to request. Um, you can have uh, extra memory, GPUs and TPUs, and the ability to scale these resources up and down as you need it. So ultimately your pipeline ends up looking something like this. So it's a lot cleaner, uh, more modular, portable, scalable. And um, at this point, there are a lot of uh, technologies in play and uh, a lot of complexity and more importantly, a lot of uh, I guess orchestration code that someone will need to need to make in order to make this something like this run. So 
that in itself is what led us to, to Airflow. Um, creating these pipelines uh, as code, um, the users would need to spend uh, a bit of time, hopefully not a lot, but a bit of time learning how to construct these using the uh, Apache operators or um, sensors, hooks, what have you. And uh, we wanted to have something that the data scientists and engineers um, could use in a more visual format and without having to learn uh, this extra layer of code in order to create these pipelines. So using um, in Alara, we have a, uh, a server extension backing up the visual pipeline editor. Um, and in that server extension, we have these con this concept of processors where we can use it to um, control the logic when creating these pipelines in either a local processor, uh, which you can run um, your pipeline locally, um, in Airflow, obviously, and we also support Kubeflow. Um, these methods and abstract methods can configure uh, containers that excuse me, containers to properly set the resources, your environmental variables, um, and what have you, et cetera. So let's see, with the, as an example, with the Apache Airflow processor, um, this is kind of in a quick, very high level of what happens when you go to create a pipeline with Apache Airflow. So, uh, when you go to submit, a, after you've created a pipeline, you go to submit it. Uh, our process goes ahead and constructs a graph logic of the pipeline. Uh, it tries to figure out and does, or it does figure out um, what dependencies, local files, uh, data sets that you that the pipeline requires um, to run correctly, and submits that to S3 object storage. It then goes ahead and builds the DAG, and then it pushes the DAG to GitHub. Uh, on the other end, in DACL deployment, um, Airflow will then sync with um, sync with GitHub to pull the DAG. It then reads, kicks off whatever pods it needs to according to the, the DAG itself. Um, these are all um, notebook operators, which is a subclass of Kubernetes, the Kubernetes pod operator. And um, in turn, it'll go, uh, each of these is essentially a notebook and it'll, in turn, it will pull uh, the dependencies for each notebook specified as part of the job as needed and uh, push whatever uh, completed artifacts data sets you specify to back to object storage. So this is an example of what happens within each of the pod itself. So the notebook itself will, uh, Go ahead and go and pull, or excuse me, the um, the notebook operator itself will then first pull whatever requirements it wants or it needs, uh, or it was specified from S3 um, for your notebook to run. The notebook will then use paper mail to execute the notebook, and then it'll push whatever requirements, or excuse me, whatever files are specified it needs. Uh, it needs to push S3. Will, will then do so. So just a quick demo of uh, what actually goes on when you go to create a a uh, data pipeline with Alira. So let me switch over here. Sorry, Pedro, I didn't reset my clock. Uh, how much time do I have? Um, you have. 12 minutes. Well, 10 minutes plus Q&A. Okay. That's I'm sorry. Uh, eight <laughs> minutes. Eight minutes plus Q&A. So, yeah, we're good. Uh, okay. All right. So, whoops. Uh, let me switch over. If not, my... we'll do Q&A uh, in Slack. I mean, do your demo. And if we run out of time for Q&A, we'll do that on Slack. All right. So, this is the Alira, um, the Alira launch page. So, uh, very similar to what you have in Jupyter Lab. So we're going to go ahead and open this data pipeline here that I've pre-made. So all these 
are nodes that you can just drag in. Each one is a, a notebook as described in, in the presentation. Uh, open one of these up. This one's a, a low data set notebook. So it'll just gonna go ahead and pull a data set from here and, uh, and uh, make it available for the next step in the pipeline. Um, you can annotate your nodes as you need to. So download, cleans, and analyze, and we're gonna explore additional approaches to predicting future temperatures here. This one's a NOAA data set, I believe. So you would, uh, this is the um, metadata runtime tab here. So from here, you would go ahead and add whatever configurations you need to to connect to your um, Airflow uh, deployment, as well as the GitHub uh, repo where you would be pushing your, your DAG, your uh, constructed DAG. So here it's just my private repository. I use personal access token here, and here's my cloud app object storage um, instance in in uh, IBM Cloud. So just go ahead and construct this. Uh, let's see, go save and submit. So you can run locally as well as in Apache Airflow. So I'm just going to go ahead and run in that pipeline runtime that I have. Go ahead and submit that. I was gathering everything in the background, all my all the dependencies I need to, the notebooks, and pushing it to S3 object storage and pushing DAG. And you can see here, just now he's pushed my DAG. And let me go take a look at the run here. I think I have mine set to a 10 second sync. So while that's actually syncing and getting ready to run, I have a pre-prepared run right here. So this is the same exact run. So you can see uh, everything completes successfully. This is the pipeline that I was just showing. And let's go take a look at what's going on inside. So just install a few dependencies here. Um, everything I need to run paper mill and any extra dependencies specified by the the notebook itself. I go and execute it with paper mill and re-upload the completed artifacts and any outputs to, to S3. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Let me see if it's actually synced. Okay, there it goes. So it's kicking off now. Yep, so that's Alira in a nutshell. So, um, oh, I uh, forgot to mention, so let me go back to my. So as node properties here on the right hand side, you can configure your runtime environments or for each of the nodes, so runtime image uh, your hardware requirements for each of these. Um, if you want to add local dependencies, you can add them here, and you can set environmental variables for each of these nodes, which is what's right here. So uh, up and coming changes in 3.0. Um, so I know I've talked about we use a notebook app, which is a subclass of the Kubernetes pod operator. Um, in the future, we're actually um, looking to add Airflow operator support, um, native operators to uh, Alira. So we want to allow users to specify and import core contributor operators for use in our visual pipeline editor. Um, it's currently in pre-release and experimental phase. And uh, just want to show you a quick uh, demo of what it looks like. So. Let's see, so we have a ex quick example here of just a few select operators that we have tested and um, want to just show you. So we have a we have the bash operator here. So um, here we want to uh, we're importing it from the actual uh, GitHub um, the GitHub repository here, and we're just essentially pulling in the class right here to, for folks to to fill out. And uh, yeah, so this is the bash email and HTTP operator. I think this gets repository details of the Lara org. It sends an email, um, et cetera. We're 
we have a couple of Spark operators here too, as well as Slack, and uh, we're testing more and seeing if we can add a few more for folks to use. And hopefully, ultimately, we want to get um, the the complete library in there. Um, but uh, like I said, it's a work in progress. So we want to try this out. I said this is on a so like ten second sync. So uh, while I'm waiting for that, uh, let me oops, play from there. We go. All right. So I just want to wrap up uh, since we're running out of time. Uh, so ultimately. Um, uh, in a nutshell, um, with the Lyra, uh, we want to deconstruct my URLs, existing pipelines into notebooks, um, determine what your pipeline resource and environmental requirements are, and then build and run your notebook uh, script-based pipeline with the Lyra's pipeline editor. And uh, if you need any help, um, please don't hesitate to open an issue on our GitHub page or just ask us on Gitter. Uh, here are a couple of pages uh, getting started our github page obviously and we have a couple of sample notebooks heavier notebooks you can try out uh, COVID notebooks uh, be sure to star and fork our repository if you're interested um, propose improvements uh, just talk about a in general how to get getting started uh, comments concerns uh, anything you want to talk about feel free to check us out uh, i want to roll back to oh okay so here are our Operators, so it's just a very basic example of of what we're trying to get going here. Um, hopefully, it gets you guys interested. And with that said, um, 